So if you're in this room, I'm taking it as a sign that you're ready to get your hands dirty, that you're ready to actually dig in to following the footsteps of the NASA team, the HHS team, to building on what is already a growing community of practice with prizes and challenges. Um, and if you're way in the back of the room, feel free to come forward because we've lost some of our peers and colleagues who are in the room next door. So if you're having a hard time seeing us, feel free to come closer. So we're gonna do this a little differently than having everybody up here at one go. And that's because we're gonna try to fit in a lot of how-to information for you in one panel. And so the way we're gonna do it is that we're gonna have some remarks and then we're gonna have some focused Q&A because believe me, when you hear about the legal authorities question, for example, I bet you're gonna have questions that you're gonna to wanna to ask right then, and you're not gonna to wanna to wait to just before lunch. So we'll hear on a specific topic, then I'm gonna ask for questions, there are mics around the room, then we're gonna have the panelists sit, we're gonna call the next folk up, and then if we have some extra time, we will use the buffer at the end to catch any remaining questions. So I haven't had the opportunity to meet all of you yet, I've met a lot of you and it's been a pleasure, but I don't know if you're aware of my background, which is that prior to joining the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy in February, I've been running large market stimulation prizes at the X Prize Foundation for the last six years. And my role there was running prize operations. So I both had the opportunity to take a few prizes from their very idea inception all the way through award and legacy activities as well as to figure out how to take a competition that had been launched that needed to be either redirected or augmented or improved and get that to success. So before we dive into some of the very specific topics, I wanted to just share a grounding, and you actually see it in what we call our bubble pop-ups along the walls, in the phases of prize design and the phases of prize administration. Because I think it is helpful, as you're gonna hear from our deep experts to keep what happens in the life of a prize in mind. Because what I can tell you is that a prize is not as simple as put out a rule set and put out a prize purse and walk away and hope that somebody wins. You actually have to do a little bit more hand holding and promotion and work. So I want to talk about those phases and if you forget and you don't take notes and you're not like me where you keep crazy amount of notes, there's actually a handout within your blue folder that'll walk you through those phases so that you don't have to remind yourself of all of them. So I'm gonna start with my slides. So what do you start with? So Bob Lee, who you're gonna hear from next, is going to go deep in problem definition because we've actually seen that this is an area where prize administrators often get stuck at the very beginning where they say, this sounds cool, but I have this huge challenge in front of me. How do I break this down into something that could actually be turned into a prize? So we're gonna hear a lot about this, but I want you to keep in mind a few key questions when you're in this phase. Are you even clear on what your mission milestones are? And by that I don't mean, what is your mission for a prize? I mean, what's the mission of your team? So if you can have a clear path of what your missions are, mission milestones are that you're trying to accomplish, and then take a look at those and think about, of those milestones, which are the ones that you have no idea how to get to, that you are pretty confused about how you're gonna reach, or that you're not excited about the idea of turning to the same old group of solvers, to the same people who respond to your RFPs every time, or to your procurement requests every time, and you'd like to get some new minds on that problem. That's a good place to start. The other area I would say is that if you're looking for a survey of the landscape, whether you're really curious if you understand all the possible approaches to a problem, that might be a good time to use a prize. It also might be a good time to use a prize if you're really cash strapped, and a lot of us are today. If you have a sense of what type of people you would turn to to solve a problem, but you simply don't have the cash to pay but you can think through some other creative incentives to get those solvers to the table. So that's problem definition. Next slide. So ideation. This is where I'm gonna encourage you to think outside of your cubicle, office, or desk walls, in that you are probably not going to create a great prize in isolation. 
And in fact, the America Competes Prize Authority encourages you to pause at the stage and get outside input from others. So you've identified your gaps, you've identified your problems. At this point, I want you to stop and say, who should I be bringing to the table to help me brainstorm about how a prize might get us to the finish line? And you want to think about bringing a mix of people from inside your organization, at different levels in your organization, as well as outside your organization. And there are specific provisions and competes you'll hear about that help enable that dialogue with outside advisors. The other thing I want you to think about at this stage is what assets do I have? I often see prize designers forget to think about what tools they have in their own house that they could offer to solvers outside. For example, software developers. I've managed many teams of them. They're really creative, but they do even better when you give them tools like access to open data. Or you may have some internal tips and tricks about how to approach a particular data set. That's important information for you to know. You might also have partners that you could bring to the table who would actually help you uh, construct the competition. And the last thing is, make sure you're not duplicating efforts. Spend a little bit of time on challenge.gov and look at what other agencies have done. Bring other agencies to the table. OK, this is a really long stage. I don't mean it has to take a long time. I mean that I've got a longer list of questions for you. And then when you have finally figured out what type of prize you want to do, this is where you're going to get into the nitty gritty. You're going to start talking to agency counsel. You're going to start identifying your sources of funds. And you're going to start answering questions like, how the heck am I going to judge this competition? Do I need to bring on outside judges? Are there stages of this competition that it would be useful for me to build in, such that I understand how close my entrants and teams are to reaching the goal? What's my intellectual property strategy? This is one we get a lot. Should I, as an agency prize administrator, be asking to keep the IP for the government for my agency of the teams and the solutions? Or should I be letting the teams that have entered the competition keep their IP? And my answer to you is there's no magic answer there. You actually have to think through the strategy of why you're holding the competition. Are you trying to inspire a market that is operating in the private sector, in which case we should let the teams keep their IP, and you should help promote getting those solutions to market. If you yourself are solving an agency problem, an actual gap in your mission, and you want to have the access to the solutions to use, you at a minimum need to ensure that you're getting a license for those solutions. And those are all options at your discretion. And I want you to think through risks. In a technology demonstration competition, what happens if somebody gets hurt? Have you thought through the provisions of unintended consequences of the solutions that might come forward? So this is really where you're going to dig deep into your planning and your decisions about the construct of a competition. OK, orange. It means we've launched. We're actually out there. We're public. You heard about some great competition launches at Health Data Palooza last week. Why do you make a big splash in an event like Health Data Palooza? In part, it's because you're trying to reach your core audience. You might decide to do this on an online platform that has a community of solvers already assembled waiting to try to attack your problem. Or you might decide that you need to reach out to research universities or to a much broader set of companies, startups, and entrepreneurs. Each of those decisions will determine what your launch plan is and where and how you launch your competition. So now we're in it. We're out there. We've set out the prize purse. We've asked for teams to come forward. What do we need to be thinking about? One, do you have interim judging stages that you could use to figure out how far your teams are? Do your teams actually need support? This is something we see a lot of. Somebody will launch a competition, and then they will provide no way to actually answer the questions of the entrants and the solvers. And if they're smart, and if they're curious, and if your problem is hard, I can pretty much guarantee you that they're going to come forward with a whole lot of questions for you. And you're going to have to think about how to fairly answer those questions for all of your entrants. Something that we often forget is what type of media can you be capturing as you move through the competition? So why would you want to do this? Well, first of all, some of these competitions may be about creating 
lessons learned for others. You may be looking to capture the different strategies and approaches. If you aren't keeping track of how teams are trying to solve your problem, you may have missed a window to capture a pretty amazing lesson learned. In addition, you may be wanting to get the word out to an industry, to the general public, about what's possible to create a paradigm change about the state of technology today. That's hard to do if you aren't asking your teams to help you tell that story. So my favorite part, I've gotten to give away tens of millions of dollars in prize money to some really amazing entrepreneurs. I've seen grown men cry. I have seen peers gasp out in awe at what their fellow colleagues have done. Literally grown men, engineers, gasping in jealousy. This is the moment we want to inspire. And so don't let that moment pass. This is a great moment to actually be lauding not only the winning solution, but also other teams of merit. Because as you'll hear throughout the day, it's not always about the winner. Sometimes it's about the third place team that actually brings their solution to market. And don't forget to acknowledge your partners. We see this step missed. If you had a media partner or a foundation or a corporate sponsor help you reach the goal, making sure you've maintained really good partner relations is one of the key ways of actually getting to the end game and then repeating that success in a future competition. So last, and when I get to this, I want you to think all the way back to that planning slide when we were talking about planning. Because if the first time you're thinking about legacy is after you've awarded your prize, you're probably a little too late. So this is actually really key for you to hit on when you're planning, and why. Well, I hope you're offering the prize because you actually either have a business need or a desire to push a market or a technology forward, or some other social consideration. And if you're doing that, you need to be having a dialogue with the impacted agency, the impacted regulatory bodies, the impacted industry associations, so that they're ready to receive the breakthrough. And you may just need to be briefing up inside your, in, inside your agency to make sure that your peers and your colleagues are ready to actually implement the solution when you have it. So don't end here. Think about starting here with legacy. So with that, I would like to dig into the nitty gritty. I'd like to actually talk a little bit more about problem definition and deconstruction with Bob Lee. Bob is from the Open Innovation Project Lab at Wright Brothers Institute. You're going to hear more about their work with the Air Force Research Laboratory and the very strategic approach they use to digging into problem definition. So Bob, come join us.